KJ4YZI for another video review. It's been a while, but uh, I finally got an item from eBay that I was uh, totally excited about, and of course I want to add it to my video review collection on YouTube. You're all familiar with the uh, GT3 version of Bofung. Okay, this was after the UV5R, uh, UV82. It's the GT3. Well, they came out with a new GT3 called the GT3. TP and the TP stands for tri power. This is an 8 watt handheld. And my goal in this video is to prove to you that this is an 8 watt radio. I'm going to put it on a power meter uh, and see what I get out of it on high power. Now, uh, I've already went through and tested this and used it, okay? Uh, so I put it back in the box. I'm going to unbox it and show you what it comes with for the questions that say, does it come with this or does it come with that? I'll show you. Um, so, immediately when you open the box, first you'll of course get your, the, uh, let's see, find a good way to do this here. You get the Pofung card here, okay, and for those of you who haven't realized yet, Pofung and Bofung are the same manufacturer. Bofung is manufactured by Sane Sonic, um, Fujinan, Nanan, Bofung, electronic company, and, uh, it, it was uh, when they released a new line, instead of uh, showing it to be Bofung, they came out with Pofung. This is a Bofung. Okay, so uh, if you see a similar model labeled Pofung, it's from the same manufacturer. Okay. Uh, you get the instruction manual, alright, and they if you if you were an owner of the original UV5R radios, you remember those uh, manuals were in Chinese, they were very hard to read. These manuals here are color. They have a lot of uh, good information in there that show you about how to set different parameters on a radio. So, good thing to have uh, in this manual to read in it. Okay, always want to read the manual. So, <clears throat> now I've already put the battery on it. Okay, this is the GT3 TP. All right, tri power. So you'll notice that it's remarkably identical to the GT3. Oops, there we go. Alright, the difference is this one is 8 watts uh, with a newer firmware, of course, also. So, a couple little bug fixes in the firmware, but uh, definitely a lot higher power. So, you'll also get in this box, um, like you do the other ones, you get the hands free kit uh, for the earpiece and microphone. All right. You will get a car charger. Car charger goes in a cigarette lighter, 12 volt accessory lighter in your car, and this part will plug into the charging base. All right. Here is the charging base I was telling you about. Now, this will fit your previous GT3. You can leave the same charging base on the desk, and it will work. Okay. Uh, and of course, here's the wall wart that comes with it. And this is identical to all the other units you may have. If you have the GT3 or the UV5R Plus, all these are the same. So you can use this plug here. It's the same voltage, same design, same fitting on the end of the plug. This base is what makes a difference. So this will work for all the GT3 radios here, Mark II, Mark I, Mark III, uh, but not the UV5R and the UV82. So this is proprietary. Right. You'll also get, the, of course, the belt clip that goes in the back, which I haven't installed yet. But the screws for the belt clip are right on the back. So you simply take those two screws out, put the belt clip on, and screw them back in. All right. You get the wrist strap for the handheld, which I always end up putting on my radios. And you also get an antenna. Now, this antenna is supposedly upgraded from the previous antenna because when you put more power through uh, an antenna, you have to be able to... Uh, be capable for it. So apparently this antenna is supposedly rated for the new power on the radio. All right. So I like how these GT3 antennas uh, compared to like the original UV5R antennas were really hard and, and short and these bend here. I like the, the bending part of the antenna. Right. So 
it's not so bulky on the top of the radio. But so that's the GT3TP. Now, uh, what what I'm going to do is uh, I'll show you a few things on here, and I'm going to put it on a power meter and show you the eight watt output. I've already tested it myself on the power meter, and yes, uh, for example. Um, I was talking in my house, now I've never been able to do this with a handheld, on my couch with 8 watts and this antenna, I was talking to a repeater in Melbourne almost 40 miles north of me inside my concrete house. And the guy said uh, I was very intelligible, I had a little bit of a hiss or a static, but that was 40 miles. I mean, that's, you know, I can't do that with my GT3 or my UV5R, my UV82L, I can't do none of those. Uh, I have to step outside and get up higher. So... Uh, rule of thumb is you double your power and you get a half a S unit increase or one S unit increase. So you, if you went from 4 to 6 watts, it wouldn't be a marginal notice. If you went from 4 to 8 watts, you're doubling your power. That makes You have to double your power to make a substantial increase. So to be, double, to be more efficient from 8 watts, you'd have to have 16. Uh, a 10 watt radio wouldn't get you any more uh, power. Um, it would give you a little more power, but it won't make a noticeable increase until you double your power. So... Mm -hmm. The firmware on here, you hold the number three key and you turn the power on and hold it. Okay. The firmware, if I turn this around and read it myself, firmware is BFP3-25. Alright. But the standard features on the GT3 uh, are familiar, you're familiar with and they operate the same. Alright. Um, I will... One, six, six. Hold on. I will put in a repeater real quick so you can hear it. One, four, six, six, six four, four, zero. zero. I'm not sure what uh, ja uh, Edna's got for lunch uh, supper tonight. I guess I'll find out when I get home. That's a loud Probably radio. Probably something on the yeah. grill. Speaker, we were supposed to have it. The speaker has been uh, exposed more in the front with the GT3 versus uh, the UV5R. Like the UV5R was covered a lot more, so these radios, whether it be the GT1, 2, or 3, the the audio is very yeah, loud. A good plan. At the first at the front um, of the radio. Yeah, so. last, well, a couple of days have been a bit of a, a blur for me. Um, I right. found out yesterday. Now, um, this unit also has the FM radio that the other units had. My, you know, visitors and stuff like that. It's okay. Just I wasn't giving you uh, a, a look at FM broadcast you, radio you from 65 to 115 megahertz. Uh, it does have a flashlight. It has a blinking flashlight. Okay. Um, dual band, of course, 136 to 174 and 400 to 520. Now, the one thing you'll need to know about this, and I'll show you real quick on the computer, you have to use uh, the newest software from Bofung website in order to unlock it fully. The radios come uh, factory 140 to 150 and 420 to 430 I think. You have to use the software. You can use the same programming cable for this uh, that you may have for your GT3 or your UV5R um, but Chirp does not work with this yet. Now maybe Chirp will upgrade that but Chirp will read from the radio but will not write to. It says there's an unsupported firmware and uh, nobody's mentioned that yet on the internet so I'm guessing once this radio becomes more widely available that people will start re requesting it and they'll get that fixed in the next version of Chirp. Uh, mainly because all the radio versions are practically the same but this has three power outputs uh, so certain things in the menu such as uh, of the programming such as uh, changing the power in the programming software, it doesn't know the difference uh, on this radio because there's a, this radio has high, medium, and low, and I'll show you that here, uh, whereas the other radios have high and low. All right, so you have transmit power, high, let me see. So you have high, medium, and low. So high power is 8 watts, medium is 4 watts, like your normal uh, Bofung and uh, UV5Rs and stuff, and low is 1 watt. All right, so, um, but, and like I said, the, the, the firmware number on here, so it, it doesn't work with Chirp, so I'll show you real quick, uh, use your existing programming cable from a GT3 or UV5R, I'll give you the link in the description for the software, you can download it, it does work, and you'll have to use the software to unlock it from 136 to 174. Also in the software, it gives you the option to make it dual band for 2 meter v, uh, VHF and 220. Now, I wouldn't 
recommend transmitting on 220 if it allows you to because the radio is not designed for that. You should, however, be able to monitor 200, uh, 220 megahertz frequency. And that's in the software, so we'll get to that in a minute. First thing I want to do, though, is I want to get this on the power meter and show you what this does on power. So let's see what it does. All right, so I got the GT3 TP here in the middle of the 2 meter band. And uh, I have a adapter cable here that's SMA to a PL259, which goes to the dual band power meter here, which is connected to this little mag mount antenna stuck on my Yesu because my outdoor antenna is not working right now. So, as I transmit, the you can see on the lower level there, uh, 0 to 15 watts is the scale I'm on, 15 watts, and 8 watts. There it is. Alright. Uh, I'm sure the SWR with this being plugged, uh, connected right here in my room is not helping, but the most accurate reading I can get is just about 8 watts. So that is the truth, that this radio is definitely... A true 8 watt radio compared to uh, some other ones that claim to be 8 watts that are not. So the proof is in the video, people. All right. So uh, about this programming issue. So what you're going to want to do is go to the Bofung website. Now this is, link is in the description, uh, but it's BofungRadio.com/en. Okay. Uh, so when you go here, this is the main site. Go to support up here, and when you go down, you'll see programming software. If you need the USB driver, here it is but here's the programming software now on this page this is the one I downloaded right here UV5R underscore W64 okay I'm using Windows 7 64 bit and this worked for me I think you have to run it as administrator if it gives you an issue but once you download this this is what I found now some of these may work here but this is what I found will be the one that works for this new TriPower GT3 once you open that full, uh, software you will come to a screen that looks like this and it says on the top UV5R series program software only supports firmware after BFB 291 so go here in the communication first and you want to pick your COM port I'm on COM3 You'll have to go into your device manager and find out which COM port your uh, USB cable is assigned to. All right. Next thing is go to program, have your your radio plugged in, and click on read from radio. Now it starts reading. <clears throat> this is downloading all the information from the radio. Now I haven't programmed this yet, so uh, I don't have any frequencies that I programmed in there yet. Once this is done complete all right now you can go up here to edit channel information these are all your program channels so just like any other software you would click on uh, VHF UHF put in the frequency for instance 146.520 for simplex uh, transmit will be the same your tone if you need a tone uh, transmit power high or low now this again this software doesn't know there's a high, medium, and low, so just pick high. That'll be 8 watt, and then you can go through and select medium or low on the front of the radio. Um, wide or narrow, and yada yada. But all this here, and you can put your alpha tag here. Alright. Once you're done here, uh, you would save all this to a file up here, and this would save it to a file. Then you can write to radio. Uh, up here to program you go to write to radio and that's going to send all that information back now going to other is the page here where you'd want to unlock the frequencies so I've already done this now first one here you can click on uh, more than 480 megahertz to allow transmit so that would bring you up to 520 if you take that off you're only going to be able to program up to 480 here's the other one I showed you uh, work band 136 174 and 200 to 260 now I can't guarantee that's gonna work it's not safe by the manufacturer but you should be able to receive on this if it lets you transmit I wouldn't recommend it the uh, software the the electronics and the antenna are not made for that frequency so it's really not going to be of help to you uh, but up here this is what you're going to want to do make sure there's a check mark here and fill out the whatever max over here so 400 to 520 okay once you do this that's going to unlock your radio you hit right you'll see the radio reset meaning that it's done 
my radio just reset it's done all right you can close that but uh, if you wanted to go to optional features here this uh, is for various features on here if you wanted to program the different colors for the backlight the uh, a band frequency mode you know stuff like that um, a voice announcement uh, all this stuff is in FM at radio enabled so this is uh, uh, optional features that would be a lot easier to do here than they would on the front of the radio. But when you're done doing all this, you can just write it to radio like this, and it sends it back to the radio with all your new channels and program information. So uh, this video pretty much in, in, uh, incumbent, incorporated the testing of the 8 watt, the uh, unboxing, and the programming, and the unlocking of the radio. So. Uh, I hope everything here has been explained to you, and if you have any questions, as always in my videos, you can rate or ask your questions in the comment sections, and if I don't get them to the questions, there's tons of other people that will. So thanks for watching 7.3. This is KJ4YZI.